This is costing you 50 horsepower. In this video, we're gonna show you how to actually get that 50 horsepower back. So if you watched the last video that we did flow testing the Edelbrock Performer RPM cylinder head for Project Mission Impossible, you've seen that we discovered a problem. Basically, here's what happened. With the th stock 318 bore, the heads, the valves were shouted. With the bigger bore, they weren't. Now, he here's the deal. Not only did we get more flow from the bigger bore, but also we got more cubic inches. So an overbore is worth more than just the extra flow or more than extra cubic inches. And so, Andy, read the numbers so out. So check this out. This paper represents a 4030 bore, which at 500 lift, that cylinder head flowed 252 CFM on a 4030 bore, doing nothing but putting it on a stock 318 bore size, which is 3.91. At the same 500 lift value, it shrank to 225 CFM. That's over 10%. That's over 10%. I hadn't looked at it like that. Yeah, over 10%. So, with the small bore and the shrouding, you're losing something like 6% cubic inches and 10% flow. What's that worth? Could be as much as 50 horsepower. So there's our problem. Now here's what most people tend to forget about flow benches. Most people think of flow benches as just, hey, I'm going to flow this cylinder head and it's going to tell me if it's good, bad, or indifferent. We, on the other hand, use it to figure out how much flow we can gain. And in this case, we proved that there was a major problem. So if we would have just blindly put that cylinder head on that engine block without doing this preliminary testing, we would have been in left field. Yeah, well, something I didn't mention. That's 27 CFM at the top end of the lift. <laughs> it was basically 10% down all, all the, the way. way through. So all of you Mopar guys who think the 188 valve is a better answer, you're right, it is, because it's less shrouded. But we're looking for maximum power in this stage two build and it's my job to cram every bit of air that I can get into that cylinder. And in order to do that, we've got to fix this shrouding. Now, how many ways are they to do that? That is what's going to be answered in this video. Well, you didn't think I was going to stop at a roll of paper tape and cutting out a notch with a knife. No, no, Andy doesn't stop at simple stuff. He we, has we... to take it to the bitter end. And that's right. I will chase that rabbit through the hole and come out somewhere in China. So let's go over to the flow bench and I'm going to show you what we've come up with. When I told you we would chase that rabbit down the hole, you know, the idea came to me that we have a 4030 bore fixture here that's pretty much non-adjustable. These things are made out of aluminum and what you bore or, it out or to. Plastic or plastic. Or plastic. expensive the, either way. Either way, it's expensive. So my wheels got to turn in one night and the concept of these came up. What Mike, if we could modify it? Micah's brother? Yeah, so this is Micah. You know Micah, he's been in plenty of my videos. He drag races Clark. Well, this is his brother, Seth Monteleon. So he is a hill climb racer, insert picture. He has one amazing car and everything on that car Aero-wise has been pretty much 3D printed by yeah. him. And some pretty big stuff as well. Big like stuff. whole fenders. So I'm going to put his contact information down here at the bottom uh, where you can email him if you need something trivial like this made up. And, and he doesn't do it for free because he's invested a fortune in his stuff. <laughs> but it's not expensive either. So basically what we've done here, the black one is a 4030 outside diameter with an inside diameter of 3.91. This here is 3.95 inside diameter. And then this one right here is 3.97. That's the board that we're actually gonna end up with with this 318. Yep. We want that 252 CFM back on the bench. It doesn't matter how much I port that cylinder head, 
if it, it restricted so if it's else. breathing through a straw, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know that we're working on a 318 Mopar here, but I encourage you to watch this video to the end because this basically applies to any engine, two valve, small bore type deal. You're going to possibly run into this and it's something that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to put bigger valves in something that has such a small bore. So this would apply even more so to say a 305 Chevrolet, which has like a 3.7 five inch bore, big problems. Something to keep in mind. So what you're looking at here is these marks represent where the top ring land will actually be. And what we're gonna do is just bevel this edge with a Goodson sandpaper roll and to mimic what we would actually do in the block. This should work. So what we have here is the bore fixture or sleeve is actually in the fixture. First up is the 3.91 inch bore because I want to see how it compared to my actual tape job. There was a lot of naysayers out there so let's see just how different it is. In the one video where I CC'd the combustion chamber there were a ton of people who said that I didn't have a spark plug in there. There is proof and that is a three quarter inch reach spark plug. So I do not like these threads right here, the sharp edges. That spells a recipe for detonation. So we're gonna have to enlarge this chamber to get some better flame travel because that's what we're stuck with. As you can see here, the flow test on the left was the last test that I did that was taped up and had the notch cut where the right has the bore sleeve installed. There were viewers who said that the first test was invalid because it wasn't an actual bore, but you can see that the numbers are close. So this test is actually with the sleeve. You notice I have my hearing protection on, so I don't know if I'm yelling, but we're gonna do with the sleeve with the notch. We've already done the sleeve by itself with 3.91 bore. So now let's see what the contoured radius notch does. Next up on the list was the 3.91 bore with the radius notch. This was interesting because I was able to get a more of a contour onto the sleeve. Compare this to the 3.97 bore sleeve with more just of a chamfer. You can see that we're getting closer to the original flow numbers in the original test but we're still far away. So what did we just learn, David? Well, we have proven that chamfering or notching the bores works. The extent to which it works depends on where it's starting off, just how well the chambers are aligned and stuff like that, right, Andy? Yeah, and what I noticed is with the 391 bore, with the notch, I was able to get a more gener generous radius on the notch versus the 3.97, which was just more like a chamfer. So not only does the notch help, but also the angle and the radius in which yeah. it's put on the bore. Yeah. yeah, All of this needs investigation for the particular engine you're working on. Absolutely. So let's talk about how many ways there are to untrout a valve. We know Valve notching, we've done talked about that. What about offset dowels, moving the head on the block? That can help, but it depends where the valves are to start with, right? If they're not, if they're way off center line, mm -hmm. it can help. But the closer you get to the valves being on center line, the less it does. Like this cylinder head here, which is more close on center compared to what yeah. a Chevrolet is. Yep. But there's one option out there that you have may never have thought about. What about offset boring the block? So what I'm getting ready to show you here, I'm gonna shift the head over 50,000. When Andy said offset bore the block, 
there, what, what, I think what he's talking about, correct me if I'm wrong here, where you bore the block so that the bore is moved towards the intake valve. So if you're boring 60 over, you can move the bore 40 that way so that 40 come off this side and only 20 off this side. Bingo! It's going to be really cool. Now this block that I'm using is a standard bore block and I really think it'll clean up at 10 over which would mean bore 10 off of one side and 50 off of the other to come up with the total amount of 60 over. But either way, there's a commenter, and I'll put a post of it up, who actually made that suggestion. So I was already thinking in that, but I didn't say really anything because I wanted to save it for this video, but I give you major props for thinking outside the box because that's what this whole project's about, thinking outside the box. That's what winning races is all about. That's exactly right. And so hopefully whatever we learn throughout this process and we put here on YouTube, you can somehow apply it to your project so that you know that the next time you build an engine, you're going to make more power. That much better, yep. So. Remember, other than major modifications like getting your camshaft right or porting the cylinder head so you flow a bunch more air in that. Most gains are incremental. When I say incremental, I mean small increments. Five horsepower there, two here, six there, four here. Now, that doesn't sound much, but if you've got 20 of those, you've got the other guy beat. Yeah. So let's see what this thing does when I kick the head over. So I've already stated how I located the cylinder head to this since we're clamping it down. I'm actually using the dowel pins. I'll stick one here, then I have one on the other side coming through the fixture to locate the head in the same spot every time. That is the key to this whole testing. But you notice I have the indicator here. So what we're getting ready to do is move this head this way. And effectively what we're doing is moving that intake valve away from the cylinder wall. All right, you can see that I've moved the cylinder head 50 thousandths here. Uh, this is gonna be quite interesting because I've never done a test like this and that's what makes it so cool. We're gonna see because what's gonna end up happening is this is gonna make the engine think that it has a 4.01 inch bore instead of the 3.97. And that is key because we want to get back to the 4030 if possible, but we can't. So I think this is going to get most of our flow back, but I'll only know when I do it. This was really interesting. I mean, basically by moving the cylinder head 50 thousandths that way, we got to the point of diminishing returns, which means that we've got reached a limit of where we're seeing shrouding as an effect. All of this is dependent upon the thickness of the cylinder walls in that block. I know that Shane Polito Sonic tested it, but I want to Sonic test it again to make sure that we actually have room to do it. I've talked with uh, Eric Hester of M&E Engine Services up in Shelby, and he said, yeah, we can, we can do it. This is an old school trick that's meant to save an old block that may have a rough spot in one side of the bore. They will offset bore it to clean it up. Um, not something that p most people do typically to make power, but in the case of this 318, if we can do it, that's what we're gonna do. As you can see, we have nearly gained back all of the flow that was lost in the original flow test. With the 4.03, yes, it's still flowing more, but with the offset 3.97 bore, we are in the ballpark. We are a few numbers away, and that's something I can work with. We're within a couple horsepower, not 50 horsepower. So like I said earlier in the video, there's many reasons to use the flow bench. And in this case, we actually found a problem, which is a good thing because we can do our best to try to rectify the problem before we put the engine together. Another thing that most people do not think about is 
they will spend tons of money on cylinder heads and then take an out of the box manifold and plop it on those cylinder heads. Let's take a look at this intake and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. For the stage two of the Mission Impossible 318 build, these are gonna be the top dog intakes. I can tell you without a doubt. Now this is a old school Edelbrock Victor 340. And while you may say it's big, I guarantee you if you bolted this intake manifold to the cylinder head as it's cast, it will probably knock 20, 30 CFM off of it. We've got to get the flow of this manifold up. A lot of sharp edges right here inside the plenum. Um, I know Charlie Servideo did a porting video and I need to go back and watch it because if I'm not mistaken, he got one of these near 300 CFM and that's kind of where I want this manifold to end up. I know they make a Super Victor version, but for this application, I think the Victor 340 is gonna be better because I can port this manifold to get to the point where I wanna to need to be. The Super Victor, I think it would be too big a manifold for a 318. If it was a big cubic inch deal, that would be the way that I would go. Then, <laughs> y'all know my personal favorite, the Tunnel Ram, Tunnel Ram Mafia. I mean, this thing is just super cool, the old school TR5. This is gonna be awesome. Which one's gonna make more power, this or that? Put it in the comments. Which one's gonna make more torque? So I hope you got something from this video. I was surely enlightened by the whole thing of bore shrouding and I never thought I would go down that rabbit hole, but I did. And now we actually have a plan. I didn't flow the 3.95 because I figured, well, you can read between the lines of what the 3.91 and the 3.97 did, and you would get a good idea of what the 3.95 would do. Basically, the bigger you make the bore on a 318 with a good cylinder head, the better off you are. Um, that pretty much wraps this video up. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. Thank you, Seth, for the sleeves. I will catch you later.